Hey everybody, Stephen Palm Springs here in the El Mirador neighborhood of Palm Springs. Some of you may remember me talking about the El Mirador Hotel, very historic celebrity hotel back in the, gosh, I don't know, it was the 1930s, 1940s. It kind of was one of the places that put Palm Springs on the map back in the day. And all of the Hollywood A-listers came to Palm Springs. When they came, they, this is where they would stay and party. And, and many of them then decided to, to buy homes here. And then it just kind of grew from there. And the El Mirador Hotel closed many years ago. And today, that site where the hotel once was is now the Desert Regional Hospital. And so this neighborhood is just all around, is in the same neighborhood as the former hotel. It's pretty windy here in Palm Springs, but in the downtown area, we're pretty close to downtown. It's usually less windy, so I thought I would come over here and take my walk here today. It's a beautiful spring day. It's only about 63 degrees right now, but I'm sure once I start walking, I'll warm up. And one of the reasons I wanted to, to walk in this particular neighborhood is because author Truman Capote used to live here. He, I just recently, I knew he lived here, and I walked by his house years ago, but... I was reading the Desert Sun newspaper online the other day, and they did a, a story about our desert past, and they were talking about when he lived here. And I wrote down a couple of things I thought were interesting. Oh, for those of you who don't, don't know who Truman Capote is, he was an openly gay writer way back in the, the 1960s, 50s and 60s, and he first became famous for writing the book Breakfast at Tiffany's. Breakfast at Tiffany's was written in 1958, and he became an instant success, and it put him on the map when it was made into a movie a few years later in 1961, starring Audrey Hepburn. I mean, it's a classic. The book's a classic, the movie's a classic, and Truman Capote is a classic. There's also, right now, Jim and I have been watching a, um, uh, like a miniseries called Capote, is it Truman Capote and his Swans, or Capote and his Swans? We've only watched one episode so far and actually haven't been very impressed. I love Truman Capote, but for some reason, we just haven't watched any more. I, I may have to see if we can watch a second episode and see if it gets any better. Have you guys, have any of you watched it? What do you think? Leave, leave your comments and your reviews down below. Maybe if enough of you really give a thumbs up, we'll go ahead and continue watching it. The first episode, though, kind of turned us both off. So anyway, his second book came out in 1967. It was called In Cold Blood, based on a true story. It was also made into a movie starring Robert Blake. Remember Robert Blake, who as a child was in the Our Gang series, or Little Rascals? It made a star out of him as well. I mean, everyone became a star after that movie. I mean, it was a very, very popular book. And I didn't read it at the time. I was just a kid, but my, my mom and my grandparents, everybody had copies. I mean, everybody I know had copies of the book and read it. And so with the success of those two books, after that, he just became one of the most popular celebrities of the era. He was on every talk show, and everybody knew who Truma Capote was back then. And it was obvious to anyone who listened to him talk for a couple of minutes that he was gay, and he was openly gay. And that was very, very unusual for back then, for back in the 1960s. But I guess when you're that famous and that talented, you can get away with being openly gay. Even in America, back in the 1960s, no one really seemed to mind. So this Desert Sun newspaper article listed his address here as 853 East Paseo El Mirador. And apparently he bought this house... Well, he rented the house first for a year or so, and then this was at the height of his fame. He rented the house for a year or so, and then he purchased it in 1968 and lived here for more than a decade. Now, the El Mirador neighborhood is right next door to the Movie Calling neighborhood, which is a little bit better known because Frank Sinatra lived in that neighborhood, and Bob Hope, and Cary Grant, and Al Jos Jolson, and many others. But again, just a couple blocks away, so they're right next door to each other. So between the Movie Colony and the El Mirador neighborhoods, they were home to A-list stars like Errol Flynn and Jane Wyman, Lawrence Welk, Howard Hughes, Tony Curtis and Janet Lee. 
And of course, as I mentioned, Bob Hope and Sinatra and Al Jolson and many others all lived in this neighborhood. I've even heard that Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz lived here, but I haven't really been able to confirm that. So I don't know if they maybe rented here. I don't know if they owned a home. So anyway, so this morning I'm going to walk around the neighborhood. I'm just going to take a quick walk. My quick walks usually take an hour or two, but I'm just going to walk around the neighborhood and I'll show, I'm going to show you Truman Capote's house and then just walk around and I'll show you some of the other houses. If we happen to see any plaques mentioning other celebrities who lived here, I'll show you those as well. The name of the home is La Serrata, and according to Google, that translates to the closed one. If the closed one is a reference to Capote or one of his books or one of his characters, I'm not familiar with it. If any of you happen to know why the home is named La Serrata, please share with us in the comments section. Unfortunately, like so many other homes here in Palm Springs that are gated, it's difficult to see much of the house, but according to the Zillow real estate website, it was built in 1955. It's nearly 4,000 square feet in size, and it's worth approximately $1.9 million. Capote was well known for throwing lavish parties, and many of them took place right here at this home, and were attended by some of the most famous and wealthy people in the world. He was at the height of his fame when he lived here, and I'm guessing these were some pretty memorable parties. I'm glad the owners have placed this historic plaque here. The last time I walked down the street, which was a few years ago, I don't remember seeing this plaque. I love seeing Palm Springs history preserved like this. Now across the street and just a few houses up the block, heading west toward the mountains, is another celebrity home. And the last time I walked by that house, it also didn't have a plaque. So I don't know if it has one today or not, but I'm curious to find out. If you're a baby boomer like me who grew up here in the U.S., it's pretty likely you'll know who this next celebrity is as well. In fact, he was probably even more famous than Truman Capote. And wow, it looks like this time they actually do have a plaque here on this block wall. The historic plaque reads, the Lawrence Welk residence completed in 1952. It's a modern interpretation of a California ranch and Joseph S. Pauline was the designer and builder. Lawrence Welk owned this home from 1961 to 1972. Welk, a well-known big band conductor and entertainer, had a TV music variety show that ran from 1955 to 1971, making it one of the longest running shows in television history. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to read further. This means that not only were Truma Capote and Lawrence Welk neighbors living here on the same street just a few houses away from each other, but they were living here at the same time. Of course, that makes me wonder if Welk ever attended any of Capote's parties. I can't imagine that they ran in the same circles, but then again, you just never know. Zillow lists the home as approximately 2,700 square feet with an estimated current value of approximately 2.7 million. Just out of curiosity, I checked Google Maps to see how far my grandparents' home here in Palm Springs was from Lawrence Welk's home here, and it's 1.9 miles, not even two miles away. My grandparents were also living here in Palm Springs at the same time that Lawrence Welk and Truman Capote were living here, and I had no idea that their homes were just walking distance away from my grandparents' home. And of course now I wonder if my grandparents knew. As a kid, I definitely wasn't a fan of The Lawrence Welk Show, but my grandparents loved it, and every Saturday night, when we were visiting my grandparents, which was quite often, that's what we had to watch. And now, all these years later that I'm the same age as my grandparents were, I love watching The Lawrence Welk Show. Partially, I guess, because of the nostalgia and all the good memories that it brings back. I wish I could see and show you what the house looks like, but as you can see, this enormous hedge is hiding the house. Fortunately, you can take a virtual tour online by visiting some of the real estate websites like Zillow. The photos of the home are pretty spectacular, and it's nice to see that they've kept some of the original features. Still heading west toward the mountains, right next door to Lawrence Welk's former home, is this Spanish-style home. This was the most popular style of home here in Palm Springs until around the 1940s and 50s when modern homes started being built here and quickly grew in popularity, becoming the preferred style which today we refer to as mid-century modern homes. 
Now this is the first time I'm seeing this home and this plaque. I had no idea that Eddie Cantor's home was right next door to Lawrence Welk's home. The plaque reads Cantor Family Home, 1944 to 1964. Cantor was an American illustrated song performer, comedian, dancer, singer, actor, and songwriter familiar to Broadway, radio, movie, and early television audiences. This Apostle of Pep was regarded almost as a family member by millions because of his top-rated radio shows. He was also one of the most popular film actors of his era. According to Zillow, this home was built in 1941 is approximately 2,200 square feet and just a couple of years ago sold for almost 1.9 million dollars. And as you can see there's a view from the home of the landmark El Mirador Hotel Tower. I remember visiting his gravesite about five years ago at Hillside Memorial Park in Culver City, California and discovering that he's laid to rest right next to Jack Benny. And Jack Benny's Palm Springs home is just a few blocks from here on the other side of the El Mirador Hotel landmark. And here's something interesting that I didn't realize until just now. When I was visiting Eddie Cantor and Jack Benny's grave sites, I also visited the final resting place of Al Jolson, who's in the same cemetery just down the hallway from them. Al Jolson also lived just a few blocks from here. So all three live near each other and are also buried near each other. I also read that Cantor was offered the lead role in the classic film The Jazz Singer, but turned the role down. So Al Jolson accepted the role and it made him a star. But my realization doesn't end there. Around that same time, I visited the gravesite of Lawrence Welk, who's also buried in Culver City at Holy Cross Cemetery, which is only about a mile or so away from Hillside Memorial Park. So these one-time Palm Springs neighbors are all now once again neighbors in the cemetery. How funny is that? Since I'm trying to get my exercise today and get in my steps, I'm going to continue walking west on this street, which will take me right on to the old El Mirador Hotel property, which is now the Desert Regional Medical Center. A couple of years ago, I remember spotting a plaque on the El Mirador Tower talking about its history. So I'm going to walk over there and read you the plaque and show you this historic Palm Springs landmark in a town with hundreds of very impressive architectural landmarks. This has always been one of my favorites ever since I was a little kid. This hospital has really grown and changed a lot over the years. I can't remember if I've already mentioned this on this channel, but in 1974, I actually worked here at this hospital. My grandfather died in 1971, and my grandmother was living here in Palm Springs on her own. So I moved in and was living with her at the time. And then a few years later, she died here in this hospital. So I have a lot of personal history and memories attached to this historic location. And here's the historic plaque that I mentioned earlier. It reads El Mirador Hotel. Opening in 1928, El Mirador was one of the most fashionable resorts of its day, catering to movie stars and captains of industry. When the U.S. entered World War II in 1941, the hotel was purchased by the federal government and converted into Torney General Hospital treating wounded soldiers. After the war, the hotel reopened but the easterly portion of the property became a community hospital. The hotel closed permanently in 1973 and Desert Hospital was built where the hotel once stood. The main hotel building and its tower remain standing, however, until destroyed by fire in July of 1989. This accurate reconstruction was completed in May of 1991. Right now, I'm just walking completely around the hospital grounds, the perimeter of the hospital grounds. The grounds of the El Mirador Hotel must have been pretty impressive back in the day. I'm really glad that they've retained at least some of the history. Good morning.
my urologist or kidney stone doctor is located in this building here, right across the street from the hospital. And my regular doctor is located just a block away on the other side of the hospital. And if I want to, I can even walk to the hospital and my doctor's offices from where we live. So it's very convenient. I feel very lucky to live so close to these locations. Okay, so I'm back to where I started before I walked around the hospital. I'm in the El Marador neighborhood. And I know of at least one more celebrity home located in this neighborhood. So I'm gonna keep walking up and down these streets and show you that home and just see whatever else we see. There are many non-celebrity homes here in this neighborhood that are also pretty spectacular and interesting in their own right. And not all of them have these huge hedges around hiding what's behind. I'm gonna walk down Verita Sur. This is one street over, one block over from Lawrence Welk's home. So let's see if there are any interesting homes on this street. That's pretty, isn't it? I love seeing gates like this. And we have lots of them here in Palm Springs. Now that hedge is not only really high, but it's also really long. Look how long that is. Most of the home lots in these older neighborhoods are oversized, very large lots. Most, if not all of them, have swimming pools and many of them have tennis courts. Palm Springs has always been a very big tennis town. Right from the very beginning, tennis was very popular. And it still is. The best tennis players all over the world come here every year to play in tournaments. Golf is also very, very popular here, but not every house has a large enough yard to have its own golf course. Some do, actually, but not all of them. The next street over from Verita Sur is to Chiva, and this is a much busier street. This is back on the street where I was walking earlier, where my doctor's office is located. And this house looks like it's being renovated, which is nice. Now, one thing we definitely need more of here in Palm Springs are sidewalks. So many of these old neighborhoods didn't have sidewalks. Now, you can see here, there's room for sidewalks in some of these locations, but for whatever reason, I guess not a lot of people walk here in Palm Springs other than me. Well, I shouldn't say that. I do see people walking out all the time, exercising and riding bicycles, but for whatever reason, I. I'm sure it's just expensive to add sidewalks to all these neighborhoods. Now here on the right is the other historic celebrity home that I mentioned earlier. It belonged to actor Charlie Farrell. Remember him from the TV show My Little Margie? The black reads Charlie Farrell Residence, completed 1934, Spanish colonial revival, original architect unknown, actor and co-founder of the Palm Springs Racquet Club, Charlie Farrell and his wife Virginia, lived here from 1952 until their deaths in 1990 and 1968, respectively. Farrell was mayor of Palm Springs from 1948 to 1953. And this is a really beautiful example of the style of home that most of the Hollywood celebrities who lived here lived in at the time. According to Zillow, the home has seven bedrooms and eight bathrooms and is approximately 5,755 square feet. And it's estimated that the home is currently worth approximately $4.4 million. Farrell appeared in more than 50 movies during the 1920s and 30s, but he's best remembered for playing the father on the popular TV series My Little Margie, which aired from 1952 until 1955. He lived to be 89 years old, and when he died in 1990, he was buried with his wife, actress Virginia Valley, at Wellwood Murray Cemetery, which is just a couple of miles from here in downtown Palm Springs. So I'm going to continue on zigzagging up and down the streets, making my way up to the north end of this neighborhood. I think I've been walking for about an hour now, but it's really been more of a stroll than a brisk walk. So I need to walk for at least another hour to get in my steps that I'd like to get in today. Now, Mill Avenue is the street behind Lawrence Welk's home. 
and the homes start getting newer in this section of the neighborhood. But there are also still some older homes mixed in. And it wouldn't be a Palm Springs neighborhood without lots of pink bougainvillea, or at least one pink house, which were very popular here back in the 1950s and 60s. And it looks like Caballeros is the eastern border of this neighborhood. This next street over is Chia Road, and this particular home right here on the corner looks like it needs a little TLC. And it's pretty modest looking compared to some of the others we've seen. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's worth at least a million dollars, just for the neighborhood alone. It's definitely an eclectic neighborhood with lots of different home styles. And even though the homes seem to get a little bit more modest as you get closer to Vistachino and the northern border of this neighborhood, they're still very nice. But the closer I get to Vistachino, the more I see condos and apartment buildings and fewer homes. So I'm guessing that the prices are a bit more affordable as you get closer to Vistachino, which is a very busy and loud major thoroughfare. Because of all the history here and the great location, it's a very desirable neighborhood to live in and a really nice place to walk. This week I want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to my newest channel supporter, Don Moraz. Thank you, Don, for your very generous donation to my channel using YouTube Super Thanks. It's very appreciated. As always, thanks for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.